Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good whatever time of day it is for you right now. My name's Ollie, and here's your loaf of daily bread. Today's little nugget of wisdom comes to us from the Bhagavad Gita, and it goes like this. When your mind has overcome the confusion of duality, you will attain the state of holy indifference to things you hear and things you have heard. When you are unmoved by the confusion of ideas, your mind is completely united in deep rest and will attain the state of perfect yoga. So in a lot of the videos I've been doing lately, I've been talking about the non-dualistic attitude or perspective, and here Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita describes it perfectly. He's telling Arjuna that when you transcend duality, that is, when you stop viewing the world in terms of this or that, left or right, good or bad, true or false, your mind leaves this confusion behind and comes to rest. It becomes still, centered in on itself, and motionless. It is united in a state of holy indifference. Notice that he describes the mind as united in deep rest. Before we achieve this state of non-duality, and before the mind comes to rest and to be one, it is many. The mind is a multifaceted jewel, and depending on which facet you are observing, it's going to be doing something different. And so when we transcend the confusion of these oversimplistic ideas, these black and white notions that we have, when we transcend this, the mind becomes united in deep rest. It becomes one. It ceases to be a multifaceted, fractured thing where one part of the mind wants this and the other part of the mind wants something totally different. So these are some of the hallmarks of the non-dualistic state of mind. It's united. It's one. It's harmonious. It is not fractured and it is not divided in any way. And another hallmark of it is that you feel indifference toward things that you have heard and toward the things that you are hearing. You feel indifference to ideas and assertions of fact made by others. You stop to care about what other people say. You start to feel wholly indifference. Now this is very different from a state of not giving a fuck, by the way. This is not the same as recklessly not caring about anything and having no regard for the consequences of actions. It merely means that with regards to the consequences, we are indifferent. That doesn't mean we don't care about the actions that produce the consequence. And in fact, one of my little mantras, renounce and rejoice, comes from the Bhagavad Gita. And so, it's this idea that we should focus all of our energies and all of our hopes and all of our importance on the doing and to be indifferent to the consequences. So this text falls right in line with that idea. And then at the very end, Krishna promises Arjuna that when you achieve this state of holy indifference, this non-dualistic state of mind, you will attain perfect yoga. Now, of course, from a Western perspective, the word yoga evokes images of people doing down dog or lotus pose or stretching into strange and uncomfortable ways. But historically speaking, the word yoga is far larger than this. And it actually includes a mental and spiritual component as well. So perfect yoga would be the summation of all these different types of yogas. This is a uh, really good description, once again, of the non-dualistic mindset. It's a state of mind that, when achieved and maintained for any duration of time, uh, produces positive effects in my experience. It's especially useful when you're in stressful situations or situations which you may automatically regard as problematic. Maybe you have this knee-jerk reaction to certain events or certain circumstances and Trying to achieve this state of holy indifference is really helpful when those types of situations come up. So there you have it. All right, well, thanks for joining me once again, and don't forget to live well, my friends.